감사합니다. 글로벌 조선 시장과 한국 조선 산업을 잘 보여주는 의미 있는 영상 함께 보셨습니다. 저희 정규 세션을 시작하기 전에 잠시 안내 말씀드리겠습니다. 이번 포럼은 현장에 계신 연사분 그리고 해외에 계신 연사가 온라인으로 함께 참여하는 하이브리드 형태로 진행이 될 예정입니다. 현재 세계 해양 포럼 공식 홈페이지 그리고 유튜브 채널에서 생중계로 함께 보실 수 있으며 한, 영, 일 각각의 채널로 여러분께 인사를 드리고 있습니다. 편하게 시청하실 수 있으니 여러분 끝까지 많은 참여 부탁드리면서 현장에 계신 분들께서는 통역 수신기의 채널을 원하는 언어에 맞게 조정해 주시면 대단히 감사하겠습니다. 아울러 저희 실시간 댓글 Q&A도 진행 중입니다. 오늘 토론과 발표를 들으시면서 궁금하신 사항은 남겨주시면 저희가 질의응답 시간에 반영해서 또 답변을 드리도록 하겠습니다. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Now we will begin the session three on shipbuilding. And for your information, we're running today's discussion live over both our YouTube channel and also our official website. Please abide by this information. 네, 그럼 지금부터 세계 해양 포럼 정규 세션 3. 요동치는 글로벌 조선 시장. 2030년 한국 조선 해양 강국을 이끄는 힘. 을 이끌어 주실 신종계 한국조선해양 미래기술연구원 기술자문이시자 서울대학교 조선해양공학과 명예 교수님을 무대 위로 모시겠습니다. 여러분 뜨거운 환영의 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Shin Jong-gae. Today, I'm hosting the 14th World Ocean Forum, and I'd like to welcome all of you to this forum. I, Amos, environmental regulation has toughened the environment and LNG propelled ships and autonomous ships are being introduced to the market. Russia, China and Saudi Arabia and many other countries around the world are developing their new ships to improve their shipping competitiveness and the competition is getting fierce every day. Amid those difficult challenges, the global industry is shrinking. However, at the same time, it is opening a new opportunity for autonomous ships and smart technology. So the competition in this field is getting fiercer and fiercer. World Ocean Forum will explore the latest technology in the global shipping market and also seek how we can remain and rise into the 10 shipping powerhouse. Today, we are joined by Mr. Stavros Hatsi Gregoris and Vice President Igangi, CTO Ju Won Ho of HHI, who will present, make their presentations to talk about the future of global shipping and maritime transportation. First, we'd like to invite President Stavros Hatsi Gross, the former president of Marangas who will talk under the theme of future of IMO environmental regulation and smart shipping technology. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stavros Hatsigrigoris. I am Greek and I have a technical background. I have been working for the past 39 years for the Maran Group and I joined Zodiac Maritime in London only two weeks ago. I have supervised the construction of more than 150 new buildings in Korea bulkers, tankers, more than 30 LNG vessels, and one FSRU. I consider Korea as my second home, and since 1995, I have spent more than three months a year in a beautiful country. The subjects of my speech today are the short-term IMO measures to reduce greenhouse emissions, the smart ship technology as offered by major Korean yards, and the issues that should be dealt 
with in order to maintain the leading position of shipping in the world needs for transportation of goods. More than 90% of the goods are being transported by ships and ships generate, generate less than 3% of the greenhouse gases uh, that the world is emitting. The climate change and the effect of greenhouse gases have become a very important part of our life. During MEPC 72 in April 2008, IMO, and which is a, a United Nations body, discussed 37 uh, different measures and grouped them in 12, other people say 14 categories. Uh, these measures have to be agreed by 2023 and implemented thereafter. Additional mid-term measures should, uh, bring, should be decided in order to reduce by 2030 the carbon intensity, and carbon intensity is grams of CO2 per mile per ton of cargo carried, and by 70% by 2050. Uh, Long-term measures have to be applied after 2030 in order to reduce the carbon intensity by 70%, as I said. One of the most serious problems that we are faced with today is that it was not long before other stakeholders, including the EU, started asking for zero emissions by 2050. More recently, the EU initiated a discussion that is not in agreement and is stricter than the IMO initiative, moving, moving the baseline of measuring greenhouse gases from 2008 as per IMO to 2018-19 as per what they call the EU MRV. This may result to the need of reducing carbon intensity by more than 40 or 70% by 2030 or 2050 respectively. It was published in the newspapers actually today that the U.S., uh, the Democrats in the U.S., have proposed a similar legislation for the U.S. They call it Ocean-Based Climate Solutions Act. There are several ways to reduce the greenhouse gases, either by improving the technology of the propulsion system or utilizing a carbon-free fuel or increasing the cargo carrying capacity or reducing the speed or planning the voyage in a more efficient way without wasting fuel or by taking other measures. The questions raised above and the uncertain world economy prospects caused by COVID-19 have resulted in making owners to reduce their appetite for ordering new ships. Yards that are responsible for the building of the ships and are at the same time competing on technology in order to attract more business in an effort to overcome a very dry shipbuilding market are now producing what they call smart ship. Subject smart ship solutions will also be briefly discussed in this uh, short speech. Coming back to the IMO 12 categories of the proposed method, uh, measures, they are First, improve the energy efficiency of existing ships. This is what they call EXI, and these are measures that will affect ships that were built basically before 2016, and they may uh, reduce the speed or reduce the, pow the power in order to reduce greenhouse gases. Second measure concerning new vessels is the improvement of the energy efficiency design index. This, uh, th this improvement will come in three to four steps. Uh, we are already in phase uh, step two, phase two, and the ships that are being built today are 20% better than the ships in terms of emitting green greenhouse gases than the ships that were, uh, th that were built before 2016. Uh, the, all ships are carrying a manual, which they call the the the, the SEMP. Uh, this SEMP is an is 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 a manual that the officers on board are using in order to make the sailing of the vessel more more efficient. This manual has to be improved. Number four measure is to identify operational energy efficiency indicators. Number five measure is to develop speed optimization and speed reductions or power reductions mechanisms. Number six 
is to control the methane slip. The methane slip, in case the engines are burning uh, gas, uh, is the methane that is escaping un unburnt, unburnt into the atmosphere. They, there is also a requirement, and this is number seven, to control the volatile organic compounds. Uh, these are the uh, vapors that are emitted from uh, uh, from the carriage of uh, of uh, crude oil and from the carriage of other fossil fuels. IMO has also asked, has also asked, and this is measure number eight. to reduce emissions. They are encouraging, and this is number nine uh, group, they encourage port developments that may help in reducing greenhouse gases. They initiate support for development of new technologies. They encourage incentive schemes to reduce uh, greenhouse gases for the first movers, the people that will take, that will be the first to take some measures. And they IMO has also requested, and this is the last group of measures, to develop life cycle greenhouse, greenhouse gas and carbon intensity guidelines for all types of fuels. By looking into the part of the IMO that will affect the design of the SIPs, it is evident that we need new types of SIP in or, SIPs in order to be able to reduce the maritime transportation carbon intensity. I'm saying again, uh, it's only 3% gas being produced by shipping. But to give you an example, if a, a ship sails with 50% of the speed that is sailing today, the emissions will be reduced by 50%, approximately 50%. If a vessel has double the size of from a vessel that is sailing today, this may reduce the emissions by about 30%, depending on the specific design. Ships that will use alternative fuels as ammonia and hydrogen may have a zero carbon signature. But this is subject only if these uh, fuels that, are, that will consume a lot of energy to produce them uh, are produced by energy coming from renewables. Other technical improvements can be a better hull form, air lubrication, better efficiency engines, sails, photovoltaic cells, uh, batteries, and some other smaller measures that can offer smaller uh, efficiency improvements. Fuels that contain carbon in their molecule, that we call them fossil fuels, emit carbon dioxide when burned, and carbon dioxide is enhancing the global warming mechanism. If less fuel is used, i.e. the ships are more efficient, the CO2 emissions will be reduced. Will be reduced. Eco-friendly is synonymous to the reduction of the emissions of greenhouse gases per ton of cargo carried, as already said. One of the issues that the shipping industry is, will be faced with is that the population of the planet, especially in areas like Africa or like South America is increasing. The IMO requirement is to reduce uh, emissions by 2050 by 50%. But if we take into account the fact that the transportation needs may be higher, then uh, this is the reason that explains the 50 and 70% carbon intensity reduction that uh, I mentioned before. We will now outline the smart technology that is offered by the major Korean yards, which have a technology advantage over their competitors, and they should take advantage of this uh, technological uh, leadership. The main smart technologies that are being offered are smart navigation, smart monitoring platforms, navigational guidance, smart maintenance tools, communication upgrades, collision avoidance support, digital twins technology, condition-based maintenance methods, and autonomous operation, operations. I will try to repeat what the most important issues are. First, the temperature of the planet is increasing. This is as per the vast majority of scientists, 
caused by this is what is causing the climate change. The temperature increase rate has to be controlled and the temperature has to come back to acceptable levels. Transportation by shipping, as said already, is contributing less than 3% of the total greenhouse gases. But even if it is so, we have to do a proper job and try to reduce the greenhouse gases. Until the COVID-19 uh, situation uh, happened, the global transportation needs were increasing at a high pace. Today, it is more difficult to predict what the rate of in increase will be. However, the United Nations predict that the world population will keep increasing, and I have already so, said so. It is only the containers market today that, is, that it is showing signs of recovery. recovery. Globalization has increased the need of transportation by sea. If the manufacturing industry is moved closer to the consumer, the transportation needs may decrease. The cost of schemes like carbon tax or emissions trading cannot be borne by the ship owners alone. In any case, it is the end consumer who will have to cover the transportation cost, but the costs should be shared between all the stakeholders. The cost of building and running new technology ships will be much higher than the cost of similar ships today. This may drive ship owners away from the shipping market, especially in sectors of the industry in which the profit margins keep falling. We may see again state-run fleets or oil majors owned ships. The 2020 cap uh, of sulfur uh, and the experience that we gained uh, after the 1st of January 2020 is indicating that the development, marketing and the use of new fuels is associated with serious problems which may lead to serious accidents. If the low sulfur is still causing trouble, imagine what could happen with the, with the use of ammonia or nitrogen or biofuel which are completely new kinds of, of fuel. The development and the full testing of new fuels such as the one just mentioned, ammonia, uh, hydrogen, is still at a primitive stage. The same is valid for the supply and the infrastructure of new fuels. Unilateral action taken by coastal states will not help, help in solving the, the greenhouse gases issue. It will only complicate things and create distorted local markets. Policies should not be revised every second year unless there is a valid reason to do so. Policies should be based on sound technical research and not on the popularity that they may have on the electorate body. IMO is the body that should make the decision after discussions with other stakeholders and of course we mean the flag states and the coastal states. Uh, cargo owners and shippers and charterers should cooperate with the owners to reduce greenhouse gases. New charter party forms have to be developed. As said already, we may see larger and slower ship designs developing. The hydrodynamic performance of the car standard current designs has only limited room for improvement. Close monitoring of the performance of the SIPs is a must, and this is where smart SIP technologies will help a lot. Shipyards and vendors, in cooperation with classification societies and owners, should produce new environmental friendly equipment and new environmental friendly, friendly SIP designs. Government sponsoring for research and development should be considered. I have left, I have left as last one of the most important issues. The development of new technology will require a new family of deck and engine seagoing officers with much better skills. This is not a job that can be left for the last moment. We all need to work together so that the very good and still improving safety record of the shipping industry will be maintained. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Stavros Hachi Grigoris. We really enjoyed your valuable presentation. Thanks to your presentation, we learned about the IMOs, environmental regulation, and the future of small ship technology. Next, let me introduce our next speaker, uh, Mr. Chu Wono, Director of Advanced Research Center from KSOE. Please welcome him. Thank you for your introduction, and nice to meet you all. My name is Cho Chu Won Ho uh, from KSOE. The topic that I would like to talk about today is the future technology development strategy for eco-friendly autonomous ships. So if you look at the left side of the slide, it says the global mobility revolution. So uh, mobility logistics business are undergoing a technical revolution powered by AI uh, driven autonomy. As you can see here in the pictures, autonomous drones, autonomous cars, and autonomous vessels. And at the center of this movement, I believe there's an autonomous vessel. Next slide, please. And as you can see here, after the Industrial Revolution in 1800, things have changed a lot. And uh, now we are witnessing AI development in autonomous vehicles. And uh, the op optimizations in terms of logic logistics is being implemented. And autonomous vehicles is actually approaching really fast, faster than expected. And in order to commercialize these autonomous vessels, we need to prepare our laws related to it. And by the end of this year, there will be a roadmap regarding the autonomous vehicle this year. And in the IMO, by the end of last year, there will be a review on the law related to it. And next, uh, these are the changes that we've been through from smart ship to autonomous ship. In 2011, we have developed the, the system from 2011 until 2017. We focused on economic operation and we focused on the efficiency uh, and smart ship solution IoT based data monitoring for operational efficiency. And the data that are collected from that system, we are trying to incorporate that in with together with the AI technology for the autonomous ships later. And this auto automation based on AI technology, the logistics technologies are uh, applied, and by 2030, we will be able to operate, develop, systematically develop yeah, autonomous yeah, ships yeah. by this year, 2030. And the autonomous vessels, in order to lead in this sector, we are focused on uh, the coastal vessels. Many different companies are actually uh, jumping on the bandwagon. And because of the COVID-19 situation, uh, there was an unfortunate news that the, the movement has been halted for a while. And for the ocean going large vessels, uh, things have been halted, but still there's research and tests going on regarding the autonomous 
vehicles. If you look at the history of the, the development, in 2011, we had the, the first generation of smart ship, and 2017, we focus on the, the safety solution and the integrated solution. And and in 2018, we had the high EMS and 2019 digital innovation center that allows us to monitor digitally in 2020. And I believe that you already know we were able to establish the high highness uh, the navigation assistant, assistant system as well as HIBAS, birthing assistant system. And we also developed the, the integrative control system. And we have equipped the, the HIBAS on the tugboat. And that allows us for the real-time monitoring of birthing. And by 2022, we will be able to launch the ICT integrated electric propulsion smart ship. And we've made an, an agreement this year, and it will be out by 2022, September. And by 2024, we will have autonomous Roro vessel. And the application is expected to is expand as time goes by. And what you see right now is the ICT integrated electric propulsion smart ship. And as you can see here, we have the, the variable gas engine and ESS. And this is a DC the uh, electric system. Of course, this is an integrated system. And there's an autonomous navigation and automatic breathing and optimal route planning and energy management system, remote control, remote maintenance. These new solutions are applied to this smart ship and as the first uh, this will be the first fully autonomous commercial ship in Korea. And that will be out by 2022, September. And if we have uh, a law issue uh, cleared, then it will be able to operate by 2023 in Korea. And let me talk about the technology of autonomous ships. We have major six technologies. Let me explain one by one. The so first, autonomous navigation solution. So on the left side, uh, April this year, we developed uh, Intelligent Navigation Assistant System, and this is a PR material. So this is an Intelligent Navigation Assistant System. And because of the legal issue, as soon as we address that, it will be out. It will be developed and it will be launched. And we also have Digital Bridge System. And we are planning to apply this to smart ships as well. And the autonomous navigation and birthing is really important because it has the intelligence. Uh, it's based on intelligence. So this aspect would be the most important factor for the autonomous vessels. And next, uh, automated machinery. So auton uh, automatic control is really key to smart vessel as well. So as I said earlier, uh, we have an automatic integrated control. And from now on, we will do the remote maintenance and rem remote 
loading and unloading system, and etc. And next technology is electric propulsion. As you can see on the left side, uh, is using the di diesel propulsion system to ME, and then to the the ESS system. And on the right side, you can see the energy management system, power management system, and integrated control system. So the development of control system is really important for autonomous vessels. So we are planning to apply these technologies and solutions into the autonomous vessels as well. And next is the maintenance technology. This is really important for controlling a vessel. And uh, we already developed solutions for maintenance and to predict uh, the failure of a failure of vessels. So we have vision-based monitoring, high cams, and thermal camera-based monitoring as well. Next is connection, a uh, hyper-connection. As you can see on the left is the Digital Innovation Center, and it has the ISS. So from the 60 vessels that has ISS system, we get data from these vessels to monitor and control. And from now on, we will use the satellite, and it will be expanded to cover uh, various vessels. So if that is realized, then we will be able to have this hyper-connected world. And if that is the case, then autonomous vehicle development will be accelerated. Next is cybersecurity. So cybersecurity is the most important thing for remote control. We already got the certification for cybersecurity for our vessels. And as you can see on the left side, left downside, we have developed this ship cybersecurity solution, HiSafe. Next is AI Captain. So six major technologies will be based on AI. It will be controlled and operated based on AI. In order to be fully autonomous, it needs to go AI. And we and an AI captain will be developed. Uh, AI will control everything in this autonomous vessel. So the future ships will go environmentally, will go green and go AI. So these two factors go hand in hand. So environmentally friendly unmanned ship that combines innovative technology and design and hyperconnectivity will be the key. And we will have the solar power and many different solutions and technologies and the number of crew will be decreased because of that. And the structure of uh, the ship will be different. We won't have the deck, so the structure and design of the ship will be changed in the future. So the Thing, the video that you're watching is Hainas solution that we've developed. And this is applied to the SK bulk vessel. And as you can see in the picture, so there's one camera and there's Hainas operation. And that is, and we have the video here of how, showing how the Hainas is working. And this is Eastbound Solution, Autonomous Eastbound Solution, after the commissioning. So you can see the six tugboats and pilot service is being ca carried out. And there's there are six cameras to assist the Eastbound. And, and we 
and it's actually similar to the around system of uh, automobile. And high NAS and high bus, as you can see in the picture, uh, can be applied to the tugboat and used for monitoring. And this is in Ulsan, and also in Pangyo, uh, we have the control uh, state center there to monitor the movement. And here, what we are going forward, well, of course, we are the the best shipbuilder in the world. However, we want to develop uh, more solutions and provide mobility solutions to our, our customers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ju Won Ho. That was really helpful. And we heard a lot about the technologies developed by HHI and uh, the research results for the, la uh, the previous five years. Next, the acting captain and professor of School of Law in Korea University. I'd like to invite Professor Kim in Hyun. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a Professor Captain Inyan Kim from Korea University. It is my great honor uh, to deliver a speech before distinguished, distinguished the audience. My topic today is arrival of Mars and its legal uh, issues. I have 10 uh, chapters. The first uh, chapter is about the definition of Mars. Maritime uh, merchants try to enhance uh, its incomes with vessels and crews. Cruise negligence contributes to lots of marine accidents and the living Area is also required to accommodate the crews on board, uh, which makes vessels very heavy and uh, lessen the space for uh, loading cargo. New idea that if no crews are on board, the above two disadvantages may be eliminated, appeared. Mass maritime autonomous surface ship unmanned vessel is under construction and it will appear in the near future. The most feasible way of Mars is the third step, Mars, without crew on board, but the, with a shore-based controller at the shore control station. Uh, chapter two is whether Mars is uh, allowed to sail under the current rules. Sailing of Mars is impossible under the current legal rules. It is the current sailing of vessel is based on the premise that the crew as a human being is on board the vessel. The captain as a human being is required to be on board the vessel before its sailing. Liability regime under the current civil law is also based on the human being's negligence. The captain's negligence triggers vicarious liability of the ship's owner as employer. Because no human being is on board, the current legal, legal regime will not work. The legal issues was discussed at the CMI meeting in New York in 2016 and the IMO legal committee currently. Chapter 3 is navigation. First, seawarthiness. The carrier should make the vessel seaworthy. One of the requirements is to provide competent crew who will substitute crew, controller, ashore, or 
artificial intelligence, AI, uh, may be a substitute. AI's competency may be added uh, as one of our items for uh, seriousness. Duration of exercising the duty, serious duty, will extend from the beginning uh, of the voyage to the whole voyage. Second, the captain's duty to check out serious in his condition or be on board. Master is required to check a ship's condition before sailing and the condition, report the condition uh, to the ship owner. The master should control the vessel in person when it leave or arrive at the port. The controller at shore or AI may exercise a ship's captain or master's function. Collision avoidance rules. Collision avoidance rule is very important. In order to avoid collision, the crew should keep the rules in the core leg convention. Duty officer is required to maintain a sharp lookout on board. Under the mass regime, AI or control at shore maintain lookout instead of duty officer on the bridge. Next slide, please. The rules may be revised accordingly. Collision leg rule 5 may be changed as follows. Every vessel shall at all times maintain a proper lookout by AI or controller at shore. The AI or controller at shore should be uh, inserted. Next chapter is business. First, the charter party. Charter party is very important. The big change is expected in the time charter party. Under time charter party, uh, owner should provide crews, including master. Because no crews are on board, it cannot be uh, exercised. Instead, owner may provide the controller at shore or AI or robot on board or AI fitted vessel. But the duty to provide pilot or bunker oil still rests upon the time charter. Next, please. Carriage of goods by sea. Change of carriage duty is expected. Carrier has uh, duty to exercise due care on the receipt, load, keep, and discharge cargo. Carrier is liable for cargo damage caused by the crew's negligence. In case that the cargo was damaged due to the failure of maintaining appropriate temperature by AI or controller at shore, the carrier will be uh, liable just like crew's uh, negligence in current case. Error of navigation defense may be maintained. The carriers enjoy the exemption from liability in case that the cargo was damaged on board caused by the crew's negligence during the sailing. Under the mass, the cargo damages uh, during sailing may be caused by the AI or controller at shore or failure of a certain program, does the, the carrier still enjoy the same defense? The views are split on this matter.
the bill of lading is also a very important part in the shipping business. Uh, who will issue the bill of lading? In, in current circumstances, the carrier, the agent or ship's master has the power to issue bill of lading. Without the ship's master under the mass uh, the area, the carrier's agent is sure will do such jobs. The duty of a store and to keep the good, good should be carried out by the other uh, means except the cruise hand during the voyage. The next item is the general average. The person who sacrifices its cargo or vessel uh, is entitled to request contributions to other parties who constitute the same voyage. It is called as the general average. A general average is triggered by the uh, ship's master or captain's uh, decision at his discretion to sacrifice uh, one of the uh, properties uh, which constitute the same the voyage. Under the mass, uh, there is no master on board. The general average will not be uh, triggered uh, under uh, the current law. So the control at shore may take over the master's role. It, AI may be another good uh, candidate. Therefore, we need a change of uh, Article 860 of Korean Commercial Code, the general average may be uh, triggered by the ship's captain, AI, or control at shore. Next item is pilot or toy. Now we uh, just uh, heard from uh, Mr. Ju on the uh, automatic bursting system. The pilot and uh, Pilot is likely to play a great role in navigating of a vessel in port area. The difficulty of a vessel's navigation in port area between mass vessel and non-mass vessel during a transitional of the period is expected. The conventional tugboat may be changed with mass vessel, as Mr. Chu explained just before. Stevedoring. Stevedoring is a part of the carrier's duty of care uh, to be carried out. Discharging or uh, loading works uh, will be done by automated, automated uh, vehicles or facilities without relying on crew or stevedore's hand. So I think the liability uh, regime uh, will be no change in tech. The stevedoring company is regarded as a servant or agent of the carriers, even though uh, this job is done by AI, and thus the carrier is still liable for cargo damages. The next item is container box. The container box also plays a core role in the line of shipping business. Automatic tracking system is likely uh, to be developed and attached to the container box itself. The bank, uh, which lend money uh, to the carrier uh, with the box as a security, will become very happy because it can rotate, locate the position uh, of the security container box uh, in case of realizing uh, uh, his claim by the security. Let's look at the uh, regulation aspect uh, regarding uh, mass vessel. First, uh, Shipping Act, Heumpo. The Shipping Act regulates maritime uh, merchant and uh, its activity. Uh, to be uh, recognized as a maritime uh, merchant under the Korean uh, Shipping Act, it merchant merchant should have a vessel even under the mass the requirement may be satisfied because a mass is still a kind of a vessel. Second, Competition Act, Gyeongjang Bob. Competition Act controls a carrier or merchant activity against consumer. 
whether the carrier run business with a conventional vessel, with a crew on board, or mass, mass uh, without crew on board, does not matter in competition act. So there will be no change. Next item is ship construction. Ship uh, construction does not touch screw uh, because it is not subject to be uh, constructed. Therefore, there will be no change in uh, ship construction law. Product liability uh, may be discussed uh, in detail in this part. When the mass, mass vessel under construction may go out uh, for sea trial, the dock master may be on board. Uh, it is regarded as a servant of the shipyard. Controller as sure or AI under mass uh, will be regarded as the servant of the shipyard. So uh, shipyard are still liable uh, for the, uh, the damage if accident occurred. Next item is ship finance. Subject for ship finance is the ship itself not the crew. Therefore, no change is expected in terms of ship finance. But uh, in ship finance structure, mass vessel will give some kind of impact on uh, ship's uh, finance law. Necessity of uh, special purpose company in uh, flavor convenience country may be reduced. Flagging in FOC country aims at reducing cost with low salary crews through FOC registrations. Okay, next item. Ship's master on board. A crew status. Uh, even if crew is a kind of a worker, it is subject to Siemens Act rather than a Workers Act. Under the Siemens Act, uh, it has a benefit over general workers in terms of compensation. Under mass, the control ashore may not be treated as crew on board because it does not work at sea. Therefore, normal benefit will be given to the uh, control ashore. AI is, is also the same as the above. AI is not the, the human being. The status of a master on board, ship's master is the agent of the uh, ship's owner. It is a servant of carrier or the owner. Therefore, uh, it fault invited the carrier's liability in terms of contract uh, for the carriage. It also trigger owner's vicarious liability in terms of thought. AI or control, control at shore may be a substitute for the ship's master. Therefore, there will be no change of current liability system. If AI is not regarded as a human being, uh, by carrier's liability regime uh, may be uh, affected. Uh, ship management. First, uh, contractual term for uh, ship management. The largest part of ship management is crew management. Under mass, no crew uh, to be managed exists. The core part of crew uh, management uh, in the contract, such as uh, standard form of shipman will disappear. Instead, it will manage the controller at shore or all controlling system. The maintenance of a uh, maintenance part of a ship, such as hull or main engine, will maintain as usual, but it may be sophisticated. The role of shipyard. Seems that the shipyard uh, will play uh, as a ship management company because under mass, the big data and AI becomes a core part of ship operation, and the shipyard has good access them from construction uh, period. It is more uh, appropriate entity in effective ship management. So I think the shipyard may uh, operate a subsidiary for ship management. Okay, it is my uh, conclusion. The third stage, mass, will be a reality uh, within uh, 10 years 
the third and fourth mass is not allowed to sailing under uh, current law, and uh, we need to have rules, uh, new rules, uh, which can accommodate them. Navigation rules and the commercial code and the charter parties uh, will be effective. The new appearance of a controller at shore will invite new role of a ship management company. The shipyard may operate a subsidiary for uh, ship management. The other area law, uh, such as the Shipping Act, the Competition Act, and the Shipbuilding Law uh, will be remain intact without change. Thank you for uh, listening to my speech. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was Professor Kim in hyun of Korea University. He talked about the arrival of maritime autonomous surface ship and its legal issues. Thank you for your insights. Next presenter is Mr. Lee Gang Gi, Senior Vice President of AVA List, and he will talk about GHG 2030 and opportunity Korean shipbuilding industries through green technologies. Hello, everyone. I'm Professor Gang Gi Lee, or better known as a KK Lee in shipbuilding industry. I'm very pleased to meet you all through this event and I'm very pleased and also honored to be invited as a speaker for this event, World Ocean Forum 2020. Today, what I am going to discuss or share with you is Boys to Greenhouse Gas 2050. This is a, not just one single voyage, this is a voyage we together have to go together for the, our common goal of Greenhouse Gas 2050. Of course, it could have been much nicer if I am there and then we can discuss this issue face to face. But thanks to have this IT technology, we are still possible to discuss and to communicate to each other. Probably some of you can recognize me as a professor of Korea Maritime and Ocean University. However, currently I am working as a senior vice president of Avia List GmbH in, in Austria, having a more than 7,500 scientists and techno, uh, technicians studying about all kinds of power systems. At the same time, I'm also working as a deputy chair of CMAC Greenhouse Gas uh, Strategic Working Group, studying about uh, developing methodology, how to comply this greenhouse gas 2050 in industrial terms. What I'm going to discuss and share with you, this is about decarbonization. I am a greenhouse gas strategy, bridging technologies, and what is a state of art, and what is fuel we have to go for. And through industrial reality check, I would also like to stand a platform together with you where we are, and that way we can find what to do afterwards. So we can start our sailing. This is a sailing about decarbonization, but here I would like to discuss with you only for the shipping. Let's see. Shipping is the backbone of global economy, being by far the most efficient mode of freight transportation, accounting for 80% of the world trade volume. To achieve this goal of the Paris Agreement, it is crucial that sectors as shipping cut their carbon emission fast. I am a strategy for major reduction in greenhouse gas emission from shipping established in 2018. It was 40% CO2 reduction by 2030 and 70% CO2 reduction by 2050. That's relative value to the one in 2008. Recently, EU Parliament have joined this campaign 
and they are in favor of 40% CO2 reduction by 2030. When we talk about uh, this uh, measure, how to comply this IMO strategy on greenhouse gas emission reduction, I am very much aligned with the MVCL definition and their perceptives. And here is the representation of our definition and perceptives. It is divided into three terms, mid short term, mid term and long term. For the short term, it is already now. So many of the ships already reached even to the level of target 2030. It is very much depending on the reduced ship speed and enhancement EDI or TAFRA SEEMP. For the midterm, this is not enough. We have to do more. So in general, the total energy efficiency should be increased. This is applicable for new building, also for the existing vessels. Also commercially, the posting carbon pricing would be helpful. And also we should have a very clear planning for the pathway how we develop net carbon zero fuel. For the long term, 2030 and afterwards, it's a big step. We should have industrialized net carbon zero fuel available and also new and innovation in technology to burn this fuel to the form of our energy source. When we talk about maritime transportation, I usually call two charts. One on the right, this is an emission com comparison by the different mode of the transport and it is compared to maritime transportation and rail traction transport and ra uh, road transportation and air transportation. Shipping generates only half of rail traction transportation. If you compare to the transportation by air, the air transportation generate more than 40 times more emission. This is why the maritime transportation is the most clean, the most efficient way and is to be prepared. Left chart is the result of the exercise by ITF projecting the world growth in seaborne sea -borne trade. This is uh, under the assumption the world economy grows annually to 3% and interpreted to the volume of the trade, thereby the shipping volume. And according to this uh, exercise, uh, ITF project or forecast, the shipping should grow from 2015 to 2050 by three times. This is definitely good news for Korean shipbuilders and their acumen manufacturers. Let's talk shortly about the fuel. I have taken two examples, one from Shell, one from International Energy Agency, and both of them have a one commonality, very clear. I have, a, for your uh, convenience, uh, marked in vertical green line where we are 2020, you can see there is a clear change from this year. Sharp decrease of liquid fuel and sharp increase of gaseous fuel. And this is, of course, natural gas. Here you can see even when you land 2050, still this natural gas have a big portion of this spectrum of the fuel portfolio at sea. Of course, 2050, it must be dominated by net carbon zero fuel. So which means the natural gas, LNG, is the bridging fuel from today to the uh, year 2050. So country like you, Korea, you are the most advanced country for the LNG technology and also best infrastructure for LNG equipment supplier. So please take benefit 
and as a, a kind of opportunity to turn up your business. Let's talk about the bridging technologies. Now we are based on fossil fuel. Never mind it's a liquid form or gaseous form. We have to bring this to more uh, clean, which means net carbon zero fuel. So we can bring it, for example, for the LNG, bio LNG or synthetic LNG, which we call blue LNG. So we can place it, same as hydrogen, and hydrogen, it's absolutely carbon-free fuel. But to use hydrogen on board the ship, there are so many challenges, far to go, in terms of its own cryogenic characteristic, lean energy density, and also combustion difficulties. Also, when you burn hydrogen, this generates also more NOx emissions. So to solve these problems as an intermediate solution, we came up as an intermediate fuel, ammonia, together with the blue LNG. To meet this IMO target, the first net zero carbon ship will need to start entering global fleet by 2030. Considering the development period and also industrialization, there are not many years left. So there is a real sense of urgency I would like to share together with you. There is uh, another very important technology we need for making all this possible, that is digitalization. Having all those data on board the ship to digitalize that way, we can real-time make a simulation and think about the scenario when ship is sailing, just like shown on this uh, lower bottom picture, sailing together with the digital twin. And through this digital twin, we can make a scenario study and also we can analyze based on condition-based monitoring, actual real-time watching and make a diagnosis and thereby, like AI, advice to the operator or decision maker or superintendent what is the condition, what should be done. So in the future, ship will sail. It is a visible future, will sail with a digital twin. And you will have the most safe and environmentally friendly and economical sailing. Let's see what industries are doing. Here, one example who served more than 250 years as provider for the prime mover for the ship and technology provider as well. They have developed already technology to burn different fuels. And here is another example. They are doing the same. So they have already tested the hydrogen as a fuel and developing ammonia and methanol so on. What Korean stakeholders are doing right here in this event is going on. Koreans, they take their roles despite of the coronavirus from very early of this year until just the recent days. Hosted by the major ship ERs, they team up amongst the stakeholders and committed themselves to comply this journey how they can join this journey they take uh, ammonia as a media because ammonia is uh, one of the best hydrogen carrier that taken fuel they developed ship so ammonia fuel the ship that is their target and joining the pathway to greenhouse gas 2050 here I assembled all these into one slide and I called it the technology to major. So you can see hydrogen, nitrogen, and sorry, it is ammonia, and then natural gas and hydrogen and diesel mixture with the hydrogen. And then even ammonia with the uh, mixed uh, hydrogen. And those fuels are very different characteristics. Those characteristics could be extreme cryogenic, extreme toxicity, 
extreme lean density, so all different. So we need study about the fuel itself. Also how to burn to make a best combustion. This is some dynamic study and also different fluid, which means the safety calculation and simulation. All these should be digitalized and monitored and these parameters should serve for the best practice of the ship. So this should serve to the decision making for the ship sailing and also what could be the modification or improvement of the friction of the ship. And here I took a one example as uh, for the solution and new, let's say, uh, study. That is a carbon capture and storage. I took one example from the big container ship and their propulsion engine taken out, their data, and then we, together, my, uh, together with my colleagues, made a calculation. And according to this short study, already indicates this is possible to be installed on board the ship. I think this is a very meaningful study because that way we can capture carbon itself and also store it and to use as new start of generation of new fuel. In, instead of conclusion, I would like to deliver a message and would like to share with you. As a first message, maritime transportation will prevail on its own environmental friendly pathway with a major prime mover of ICE technology with a complement of digitalization, electrification, and hybridization. Alternatively, net zero carbon fuel are essential for achieving IMO greenhouse gas emission reduction goal in 2050. Bridging technologies are to be developed further. I am confident, together with you, who are the leading country for shipbuilding and associated technologies, and those spotters, academias in Korea, please, I urge you, do your contribution and take advantage as opportunity to create your new business or boost up your business. Let's together a step forward the technologies on life cycle management of carbon toward zero carbon emission before 2100. I thank you very much for listening. And once again, I sincerely wish you stay safe and be a good health together with your family and all the best. Thank you very much and also to the organizers. I sincerely also hope the best success of this event World Ocean from 2020. Thank you very much. Well, that was Mr. Lee uh, and he talked about decarbonization and fuel mix. And before we start the break, let me just briefly summarize what four of our speakers talked about. Mr. Haji Grigoris talked about the, the environmental regulation, and Professor Chu talked about future technology development strategy, and Professor Kim In Hyun talked about mass and regulations regard, regarding uh, this topic. And lastly, we had Mr. Lee to talk about decarbonization and issues and the directions forward for us. We will take a short break and then start our discussion. Once again, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, 
During the session three, we listened to the four presentations. Now we'd like to have, for the next 40 minutes, the discussion session. I'd like to, we have the panel discuss, discuss us on the stage. Mr. Hachi Gregory and Vice President Lee Kang Gi are not here in person, but they are online. First, Korea Marine Equipment Research President Bae Jong Chol, DMBGL Vice President Yi Hwa Ryong, Yi Yun Chol Vice President and Dean of Graduate School of Korea Maritime and Ocean University, and is the Chu Won Ho, Director of Advanced Research Center, and Professor Kim In Hyun from Korea University. This is online and hybrid discussion. And Mr. Hachi Greer Grace and Vice President Lee are joining us from Greece and Australia in real time. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can leave us any question so we can answer your questions during the Q&A sessions. First, I'd like to invite the three presenters and hear briefly about their ideas. First, I'd like to invite Mr. Bae Jong Chol, his short summary about the presentation presentations today. Thank you. I'm Bae Jong Chol. I'm working for Korea Marine Equipment Research Institute. I believe their presentation was very timely and important. What I was impressed the most is Mr. Ju's presentation. By 2024, the mass will operate between Busan and Pohang. And I'd like to stress that the competitiveness of shipping industry is the competitiveness of marine equipment industry. That's to say, without the equipment competitiveness, the shipping industry will not be competitive as well. So in that sense, Mr. Ju's points, As a leader in Korea shipping industry, he stressed the sustained competitiveness of marine equipment. So I like to ask him to work to improve the competitiveness of marine equipment. And Professor Igangi, Vice President of AVL, by 2030 and by 2050, we have window to reduce the greenhouse gas and we will be using a variety of alternative fuels to reduce GHG emissions in this regard Korea's marine equipment industry is very important because we develop we have the world's first most advanced technology in those industry and thank you for your effort and I look forward to your effort going forward as well so I was so impressed about your presentations thank you thank you next I would like to invite Mr. E. Hwa Ryong Vice President of DNV GL ladies and gentlemen my name is Lee Hwa Ryong from DMV GL. So after listening to all four presentations, I could think of three major themes. So the first one is related to what Mr. Stavros Hatsi Grigoris talked about. So it's uh, related to the timeline uh, of the IMO environmental regulation. You talked about something else, but I thought that that was a key theme. And the second one, 
Second theme is the GHG emission and response strategy. But uh, we also have to talk about the alternative fuel, hydrogen and ammonia. We, we really need to talk about the, the proposal of these alternative fuels. And we have a lot of a competitive advantage with the shipyard in Korea. And using this advanced technology, if we utilize these technologies, we will be able to uh, uh, maintain this advanced position in this shipbuilding sector. And uh, the last one is related to Professor Kim and Chu. Uh, Ms. Uh, Professor Chu uh, regarding the autonomous vessel. So it is not only related to the technology, but also the law and the, the security as well. Actually, the technology will be ready soon, uh, end of this year, maybe la next year. However, the legal system should be complemented for this to be implemented well. And what I'd like to emphasize is the IMO's GHG goal and vision by 2050 to 2100. We are going forward a zero carbon future. And there's a huge gap between the industry and this vision. In Korean shipyard, an EDI requirement uh, is being met uh, for the delivery. And at the time of uh, delivery, and there are other requirements like EEXI and SEMP. So for there are just so many new requirements for the operation and there's no roadmap or vision of these new requirements and the operators will have to, uh, owners have to uh, deal with these requirements, these new requirements. And the owner would have to think about how to operate these vessels for the uh, next 20 years and really uh, to meet the these new requirements. So I think that there's a gap in the industry and the vision that we have. And we need to pay attention to changes uh, that we are experiencing. So if there's a roadmap of these new requirements, then the uncertainties will be removed in the future and the ship, uh, the shipper will be able to go forward uh, with a brighter future. So thank you so much. First, we have a correction to make. Mr. Hatsi Gregoris from Greece and Vice President Lee Kuan Gi are not joining us in real time due to the time difference. However, we, if you have questions about their presentations, you can post your question online and we can, will make sure that you will answer your questions. I'm sorry to say that they are online for this conference. Now, let's open the discussion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I forgot to comment. Introduce Vice President of Korea Maritime and Ocean University, Lee Yoon Chol. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Good morning. 
I'm Lee Yoon Chol, Vice President of Korea Maritime and Ocean University. First, I'd like to briefly make my greeting remarks and have the discussions later on. The four presenters pointed out two major points. First is technology and second is regulation. Is it technology first or regulation first? Currently, the mass is mass able to sail under the current law system. He has some negative views on that. As a person who lectures in this sector, I have been confused about which comes first for the couple of decades. But sea, compared to any other industry, sea is changing faster and fluctuates more widely. So, but the regulation changes are slow to catch up with it. So the period era of confusion still continues even today. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. And as we go forward with discussion, I can see that we have many questions that were received online. So let me ask questions first. So this is directed to uh, Mr. Ju Won Ho. So for the manager of autonomous uh, vessel. It is important that they have the knowledge about the vessel. And how, do, uh, what kind of criteria do we need to have to select who will be the manager? Well, I believe the autonomous vessels are the same as the, the traditional vessels. So the crew members, well, I'm sorry, so it, it it is actually based on AI and it is, is supposed to be very simple in terms of its function. So it will go towards that direction, being more simple in AI. So the control and monitoring, it will be carried out based on AI. So the, the shipping in the shipping industry, well, the technology based uh, approaches and uh, the technicians and crew members, the, te uh, the technological knowledge that the crew members have will suffice to run this AI-based autonomous vehicles. So if you look at the crew members these days, it is not easy to be trained for a smart vessel. So that is why we are going forward to making these vessels, autonomous vessels, more simple to operate and more easier to understand the functions. Thank you. We have another question to Professor Kim in -hyun. I have a question to Professor Kim. The liability and definition of carriers, the social law and also marine act are all involved here. What's your take? Should we regulate law first and then develop over? We have to develop first and then the regulation amendment can be revised later. Thank you. It's a very good question. As Vice President E pointed out, I believe that my question overlaps with his answer because he pointed out that the technology and regulation are conflicting sometimes. So the law should catch up 
generally speaking, the things happening in the society uh, comes first, and then law are uh, amended later, because law cannot be made ahead of what happens. We can amend laws after something happens in our societies. In that sense, I believe that's the case with mass as well. The industry's needs. We we can build mass first, and then we can amend laws and regulations after that. Thank you. Well, another question to Professor Kim. The auto cars and unmanned cars are very are one of the familiar unmanned technology. About unmanned car, we have diff do you have different views? Uh, do you ha do you think that regulations are different when it comes to ships or cars? If there's an accident in ships and cars, what differences can we expect? Uh, it's a very t tricky question. Basically, I believe that basically it's the same. The a AI plays will play a very important role. Ultimately, in the phase four of mass, AI will overtake the control entirely. In the third stage three, we have controllers on coasts. It could be crew or captain. Then we can re leave the current law intact. But if they are AI, the base we will have the same issues with AI. Then can you say the AI is a human or not? If they are humans, then we can apply the liability clauses or illegal clauses without any change. But if AI is not a human, then, then things get complicated. When it comes to cars, the accident may not be very big, but ships suffer very large accidents. So under the ocean act, there are independent laws and regulations. For example, the ship itself is personified and can be a defendant, the property liabilities. So that makes ship accidents from cars, because cars are not humans in itself. But in Korea, we have Liability Lawsuit Act that deals with ships. So when in the era of AI, how we can apply these rules? So I believe that it's very different between the cars and ships. I believe the ship preference privilege. The, this clause is applied to a very special case, but A, when in the era of AI, then AI can be regarded as ship. So if there's an, an accident, if there's an accident, AI can be defendant. Not the sh uh, the, the ship with AI. We can we can introduce the law to make ship AI be uh, dependent, but it cannot be done. It cannot be applied to cars. I believe that's the difference. Thank you. We have many questions to two present presenters, but we do have discussants who have uh, good expertise in future shipping. So I like to ask other questions. Mr. Bejongchul, you talked about uh, the autonomous uh, vessels, and you and you mentioned that the marine equipment is really important. And you are researching the about the the marine maritime equipment. So, can you talk about what you do in your organization? So this. Here, it feels like that we are experiencing dramatic changes. We are witnessing these changes in our sector. 
and I say that there's a new normal in the maritime equipment. How it is changing in our sector? Initially, we were focused on the manufacturing sector, but uh, the service was added to our sector, I believe. So the direction forward uh, would be platform service. It is because the platform service and uh, technological engineering are combined together for manufacturing. For example, if there is an LNG-fueled vessel, the engine is provided by a large engine company, and the supply, like materials or equipment for this equipment engine is provided by the, the suppliers, the equipment suppliers. And there are about 70 different types of equipment going in for this kind of engine. And so there will be the, the leader companies to provide the, the system. So I believe that we need to create some kind of cluster of these equipment uh, companies. And I believe this is the ecosystem. Uh, that we have to go forward with. So the shipyard uh, industry will have to lead this industry and and we would have to nurture uh, our capability to test the system. And, and there's a center for the validation of uh, gas engine and as a system we will uh, do the evaluation and to give certification from the center and just let me add one more thing so the equipment that was supplied to will supply to the engine company to create an engine. And it's important that these equipment companies uh, will uh, pay attention to the lifetime of this equipment until uh, the, the, the engine or the vessel uh, will, the lifetime ends for this vessel. So it is kind of difficult to monitor one by one. We want to create some kind of a cluster in cloud and use this system so that we can better monitor this equipment used for engine. So the equipment, maritime equipment, uh, is going towards the connected equipment. So everything's connected. They do not function independently. And this will be transferred, that this function of monitoring will be transferred to the land. So what I'm saying is that marine equipment is connected equipment, and we need to systemize it. We are trying to support the systemization. Thank you. I have a question to Vice President Yu ha -ryong. You are the first person to design VLCC in Korea and you are currently the Vice President of TNBGL. For the class society, for mass and post-carbon era, what role should classification society play? Please. I'd like to first, before talking about the roles of classification society, I'd like to talk about Korean leadership in technology. As I pointed out several times, Korean shipyards are in a very good position in terms of post-carbon era and mass as well. But actually, the ship owners, because they are having difficulties, especially this year, they are not ordering new ships because of uncertainty because of COVID-19. But even after COVID-19 disappears, the uncertainty will linger on. 
because of the IML, IMO's environmental regulations. By 2023, EEXI will, if it's introduced, then the, it, the existing ships have to will have to take measures. So because of those uncertainties, the new building planning will, may not be implemented. That to address that, I believe. Korean shipyards are best positions to address those issues, such as technological superiority, such as smart ships, and efficiency increasing technology, such as energy saving technology, or designing techn technology as well. So with those technologies, the uncertainties such as lifetime, if we give them lifetime performance vision, then the uncertainties that ship owners have will disappear for the most part. And the class society, like us, will make proposals based on Korean technological advantages and support their activities, such as we have car carbon robust model This system is to guarantee competitiveness in 20 or 30 years from delivery to guarantee the performance. We are working with Korean, some Korean shipbuilders builders on this. So the dec decarbonization and mass we are working with Korean shipyards so that Korean so that we can fill the gap uh, with Korean yards. Thank you. Next I have question to Mr. Yoon Chal. So professor so you are at the, the Korean Maritime and Ocean University and your school, your university um, deal han deals with uh, crew and law related to maritime and every topics uh, that's related to maritime and you will think about uh, how what kind of um, human resources we need for our maritime industry so can you talk about that as the the vice president of the kmou well i think it's necessary that i talk in terms of uh, as a vice president of my school and also talk about decarbonization and in relation to my major I teach international law related to maritime and that is my major the maritime agreement and I teach classes regarding the IMO for my uh, to my students it was it started functioning from 1958 and I, it turned into IMO from IMCO that time, and the all the agreements uh, by the IMO are mandatory. So if you look at the history of the IMO, the agreements of the IMO appeared after we experienced various accidents. So MARPOL agreement, STC agreement, for example. So we talked about technical and legal issues. And I believe that technology should be leaving, leading because 
We cannot put everything into the legal system. That's why we, I believe the technology should lead and then law be followed. So based on the situations that we are faced with, we can build the legal system. Thank you. We, the time's up. So we may not be able to answer all the questions from the online. And the remaining questions will be answered later on. So now I'd like to wrap up the discussion, the Hiddy Spirited, the Spirited discussion. The proposals and the questions will be of great help when you prepare for the future. I'd like to thank all the participants from around the world. And as a moderator, I'd like to make my Final greetings. I would like to thank distinguished speakers, session discussers, and all participants from around the world. Please keep healthy away from COVID-19. 감사합니다. 네, 감사드립니다. 다시 한번 토론에 함께 주신 좌장님을 더불어서 패널 분들께 감사 인사드리며 여러분 다시 한번 끝박수 부탁드리겠습니다.